talked a lot, uh, you know, the, over the last number of years about the absolute abysmal failure that is the DCEU. Uh, despite the fact that I liked almost every single movie that was in it, other than Wonder Woman 84 and uh, Birds, of Birds of Prey. Those are the only two movies I didn't like. I liked every single other one of them, including Blue Beetle. I thought Blue Beetle was a fun movie, man. Yep. Not not the top two or three DCEU movies, but I had a really good time watching this movie. That was a very pleasant, fun little film um, that I enjoyed. And Sholo from uh, the uh, Cobra Kai, I thought he did a really good job in the role. I really did. He had charm. He, he, he has an instant likability about him. But make no mistake about it. Like every other DCU film, it underperformed financially. Every other DCU film that didn't have the name Wonder Woman or Aquaman attached to it, it underperformed. More than that, it completely tanked. The movie made a grand total of $130 million. Not opening weekend, not domestically, made $130 million worldwide total. It lost money. Even though they kept the budget, production budget, that's fairly reasonable, when it was all said and done, they lost money. It was another in a long line of failures, particularly in the last five years, the DCEU. It just was. Then came whispers and straight out statements that James Gunn was actually going to bring Sholo and his Blue Beetle into the DCU, the brand new DC Cinematic Universe. And I'll be honest with you, I never really expected that to happen. But now, according to comments from the actor himself, that's exactly what's happening. This comes just from the folks at Screen Rant who said the following. Per Screen Rant, the actor said he was confident that the character's return will be soon, but he can't say exactly how it, that will be. He said this. I know we'll see Blue Beetle again when it comes uh, in the form of Blue Beetle 2 or whatever. Uh, Matt, I always mispronounce his name. Mare Juena? I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, it's been really great to work alongside James Gunn and Peter Safran, who have graciously folded us into their new universe, even though it wasn't part of what they came up with. It's an honor. Uh, now where Blue Beetle heads in the future, I don't know, but I can say confidently that we will see him soon. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Blue Beetle isn't the only remnant of the DCEU that's going to be coming over. because we know that Peacemaker and some of that cadre is, is coming over as well. And I think that's kind of where the line starts. Amanda starts. Waller? Well, like that's part of the Peacekeeper, yeah. like uh, I mean, that thing, right? So Peacekeeper and, and some of the you know characters there coming over. But I think that's it, right? <laughs> I got to say, I think this is a mistake. But John, I thought you said you liked Blue Beetle. I do. John, I thought you liked Sholo in the role. I really did. But that doesn't mean it's the right decision to bring him over into a brand new DCU. Well, John, you said you like, you're okay with the idea of them bringing Peacemaker over. I do, but there's one major fundamental difference between the Peacemaker situation and the Blue Beetle one. Peacemaker was a smash hit. Was an absolute, unmitigated, crushing hit for them on Max. Massively successful for them. As much as I look like Blue Beetle, there is no way to spin it it was an abject failure. Even though I like the film, I'll defend this film. I had fun at this film, but it was a failure. It's kind of like the same thing. I love Man of Steel. I'll defend it all day long. But a lot of people didn't like that movie, and I can't deny that fact. This movie was a financial bomb. This movie has, through no fault of its own, the stench of the failure of the DCU on it. Peacemaker does not. Now, I, I would have also been totally fine if James Gunn wasn't bringing Peacemaker over. That, I would have understood that, too, but they're doing it. Okay, I can see it's like keep it limited. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, DraftKings. DraftKings, the leader in fantasy sports, just dropped a brand new app, Pick 6. Pick 6 is the newest way for you to get in on the fantasy football action with DraftKings. New customers can make their first NFL picks and get up to 100 bucks in Pick 6 credits if those picks lose. All you got to do is pick between two and six NFL players and choose if they're going to have more or less of that stat. For example, will a player have more or less than 100 rushing yards, or will a player have more 
more or less than one touchdown. Track your lineup and compete against others for a shot at huge cash prizes. So download the DraftKings Pick 6 app now and sign up with the code CAMPIA. New customers can get up to 100 bucks back in Pick 6 credits if your first football pick set loses. That's code CAMPIA only on DraftKings Pick 6. One offer per new customer. First qualifying pick set winnings less entry fees must generate negative number. Max reward up to $100 equal to amount of negative number. Issued in non-withdrawable pick six credits valid for pick six use only. Expire after one year. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. 18 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. Valid only in states where DraftKings pick six operates. Pick six not available in all states, including but not limited to Connecticut and New York. For up-to-date list of states, please visit dkng.co slash pick six states. Void where prohibited. See terms and pick six dot DraftKings dot com. But the Blue Beetle character Rob was part of the theatrical DCEU. It was a part of the run of failure after failure after failure. It only me, I mean, my God, nobody saw the Marvels and Marvels made way more money than this movie. And nobody saw the Marvels. I, I just can't help but think as, as good as I thought Shola was, what's the best decision, what's right for the business if you're going to use Blue Beetles to recast it, have a fresh new Blue Beetle, don't risk bringing that stench of failure over. Um, I, I got to say, I think this, I've liked almost every decision James Gunn has made. I can't help but think that this might be a mistake. I don't know, Rob, what do you think? Well, I think you, I think the way they're going to do it is bring him into Peacemaker. They bring him into Peacemaker and then no one's going to say anything because Peacemaker is the one place, look, Amanda Waller's there. It's the one place, and I think, Blue Beetle would fit right in. I mean, it may, it, a little body, you know, a little uh, different than what we got from the the earnest family man that the Blue Beetle character, you know, the son. But uh, but I think that that's a way. If they added him to Superman Legacy, it wouldn't work. I don't think it would work. It would it would it would dilute. It would be a problem. But if you bring him into some place, you backdoor him in through Blue uh, Blue Beetle comes in through Peacemaker, and, and he's written well. Everybody would forget about the fact that he was in the other universe. And I think it's a way to do it legitimately that nobody would complain about. You try and say, you put him in Superman Legacy, just just my own Twitter feed, I, I, I would turn Twitter off. I, I couldn't even deal with it, with what people would say about this. But I, I, I really liked the character. I thought, like you, the movie was a lot of fun. Um, look, I still miss Ted Cord. I love Ted Cord and Blue Beetle, uh, Blue Beetle and Booster Gold together. But I think this is the way you could do something like that. And I think that's why it, it leads me to believe that James Gunn already had that plan in his mind to bring in Blue Beetle into Peacemaker somehow. Because remember, originally, Blue Beetle was made under the auspices of a streaming movie. It was not supposed to be theatrical, which leads me to also believe that somehow Blue Beetle was involved in the development of Peacemaker because, because Peacemaker was a streaming show. I'll bet you there were talks previous to the DC, the new DCEU that Blue Beetle was somehow going to be a part of Peacemaker because mm -hmm. they were both going to be streaming shows. Then they moved him over and made it a theatrical movie, so things changed. But I think that probably, this is just a theory. I don't know if this is true, but I would imagine that, James Gunn is continuing on with what he had already come up with. I mean, character-wise, I, I think he fits in very well. The The problem, though, is power level. Right. Right? Like, Vigilante can't fight Blue Beetle. I mean, I know the Beyonce, but you got totally different power level characters, right? Um, and all that kind of... But still, it'd be interesting to see. Again, I just think it's a, a mistake to bring a living iteration of the theatrical stuff. By the way, I saw somebody in the live chat point out a fallacy that a lot of people keep pointing out saying, but James Gunn said Blue Beetle was the first official DCU movie. No, he didn't. He specific, and then he later went back to, just so in case anybody was confused, he later went on to clarify. He said Blue Beetle himself was kind of their first new character. He did not say the movie was a DCU movie. There's a vast, vast, vast big difference. And he went on to clarify that. So, like, it could be that we're going to get Sholo playing Blue Beetle, but the events of the Blue Beetle may not the, – the events of the Blue Beetle movie right. may not count as canon in the new DCU, right? And a viewer just uh, – we just had a pop-up there saying that you could introduce the character in a Booster Gold film, which is the obvious way to go. I mean, have they announced that there's going to be a Booster Gold? Well, remember, before – like, when AT&T still owed, owned Warner Brothers, before the sale to uh, to Discovery – 
there was there was a lot of whispers going around. Oh that yeah, they've they been trying to. Blue I have Beetle, a friend Blue who wrote a script movie. for a Blue Beetle movie. They've yeah. been trying to do it for a long time, but but you know, I don't know. Like somebody just pointed out, I love the Ted Cord, you know, booster gold angle. But you know, who knows? I don't know. I mean, I could see it happening. I uh, think again, it's me saying I think it's a mistake does not mean I don't like Blue Beetle. I do, or that I don't like Show and Roll. I think he was delightful, but it's part of something that failed. And I think you need as much of a clean slate as possible, even though you're already bringing something over in the Peacemaker group. But at least that group wasn't like a huge smash hit. So I, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Maybe James Gunn has got a brilliant idea for it. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.